pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And it is April 28th. And I have a call for it. Here. 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 Recognition of audience. We have Mike Hansen, the omnibusman for the property of the Army and expressly here to wish you trust the board. Very good. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, uh, members of the Village Board. Uh, my name is Michael Hansen. I'm an attorney in Joliet, and I've been appointed as the omnibusman for the Yoliana. Uh, I was appointed by the Will County Board through the Office of the Will County State's Attorney. Uh, I am an independent person. I don't have to answer to anybody. My purpose, uh, my duties and responsibilities are to assist property owners and any citizen uh, in this area along the, uh, the, where the Ilian is supposed to be located with any questions, concerns, issues concerning uh, the acquisition of property. If, and I'm not supposed, my role is not to act as their lawyer. I don't get paid uh, by them. I, uh, I get compensated uh, through uh, the Will County. Uh, there's, it's a, it's a, a grant provided by the state of Illinois. That's how I get compensated for my time. Uh, but it's to assist uh, people who, whose property may be acquired with questions that may be appraisal questions and may be going on property questions. Uh, the status of the OAN at this point in time is that uh, this, the record of decision is due to be uh, entered sometime toward the end of May. That's what IDOT is expecting, uh, and that's the decision which uh, would give the, the right for the OAN to proceed. Uh, IDOT right now is working on what they've done so far is they've got all the property, the subject properties in the uh, corridor, they have them uh, They've done the environmental work on the property. They've done the survey work on the property. They are starting to commence the appraisal work. Uh, and the intent is to, if the record decision is positive uh, at the end of May, then they will be, uh, for the next year, sending out appraisers to, and there's about uh, 250 to 300 uh, parcels that are uh, in the footprint of being, uh, being acquired. Then they will go out and, and uh, conduct uh, on-site appraisal work so then they can make offers of acquisition to the property owner sometime over the course of the whole year. The, the, uh, the roadway itself is due to be the uh, construction would be theoretically started sometime in 2016 uh, with a due date of completion at the end of 2018. So it would take at least three full years to construct. Uh, but this is a role that um, I understand was started uh, you may be familiar with this type of role being in this area because it's been used uh, with the third airport. 
uh, and I'm just, I'm just kind of new to this role, if you will. Um, and and I, I have office hours here right in, this, right in Washington Township Hall on the fourth Tuesday of every month. I've been here twice from 3 o'clock in the afternoon to 6 o'clock. Uh, I have an office in Joliet. I have a website. Uh, many people have uh, uh, called me on the phone, sent me emails just asking answers to certain questions, and, and I have a direct pipeline to IDA where I've been. Uh, I, I hope that I'm responsive and can do the best I can by answering their questions and getting back to them. Uh, and I wanted to come here tonight. I was invited by Mr. Barber. I appreciate the invitation to uh, let you know who I am and if you have any questions or if you have any things that would come up during the course of this process, to please feel free to call me. I'm trying to get my name out uh, because uh, obviously a feature being one of the main areas that's going to be uh, affected uh, by this uh, roadway so that I can you know, offer any help and assistance to uh, property owners and people in the area. So that's why I'm here tonight. And uh, welcome to answer any questions. Or do you have a direct phone number or an extension? Uh, do I have a direct phone number? Yeah. Yeah, my office phone number is really, that's where you get a hold of me. Uh, I'll leave you with some cards. Is 815-744-9500. And generally every day I just set aside a time at 11 o'clock every day. Myself and my assistant get together and, and go through whatever I may have received in the way of correspondence or have any phone calls so I can try and do something every day to keep on top of this. Do you have an extension at the township office here? They can do oh, no, I just, I'm just i just here. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I uh, let the township, they've been extremely helpful and cooperative. I just let them know it's on the schedule that I'm coming. And uh, certainly I'd like to get out and plan to get a little more publicity. I, I would think, uh, I think as everybody knows, there's been two major public meetings. One was, uh, let's see, this is April. One was a couple months ago. Uh, in Wilmington, there was another last year. There are not any plans right now to have any other major public meeting. Uh, I'm trying to have, uh, I had a meeting in Piatone about uh, six, to six or seven weeks ago at the American Legion Hall. I'm trying to set up another one in Wilmington, uh, hopefully within the next month, uh, just to um, have anybody in the area to come, come and if you have questions, comments, or whatever. So. Uh, that's, that's the purpose of my of my duties and responsibilities. I have two questions. Go right ahead. You did such a great job, you already answered them. Okay. All right. And when, when the possible build date would be, and then whether or not you have any, uh, whether or not any of the residents have reached out to you when you answered yes. Yes, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, and obviously what I'm trying to do uh, is get out some better, more publicity. Uh, I've got a game plan for that. Uh, so. That if anybody here asks questions or something, I, like I said, I hope that I can be, I, I try my best, at least I've got, a, I've got what I feel is a good pipeline directly into the IDOT, and they've been very helpful to me. Uh, I can only imagine you know, the residents trying to contact them themselves, where they go, who they contact, do they return phone calls. But, um, uh, sometimes the answers are not what people would like to hear, but at least we try and be helpful and responsive to them. Anybody so. else have any questions? You know, one of the big complaints we've heard in these public meetings yeah. is contractors for IDOT and surveyors or engineers, wherever they were, went on these people's properties, did damage, I don't know what kind of damage, rust, I guess, and who do those people call if they have that and they believe that they didn't have permission to go on the property? Well, they didn't, you know, certainly call me, I could try to help them out, number one. Uh, the, the status of the law is essentially this, is, is I've been told, this is what I've been informed, that, um, I don't want to use the word all, but at least substantially, if not practically, all of the survey work and environmental engineering work has been completed. Okay, that's number one for all the properties. Now, the, the IDOT has the ability legally to go on properties. IDOT has established a procedure whereby they, this is what they do, they give these people <coughs> notice, they try to call them, this is what I've been told, and they go on to a property and they put a, a notice on their door, there's a special card that they've been there, they like to talk to them, uh, but they, but uh, by virtue of my statute, they can, appraisers, they're not supposed to do any damage to the property, of course, you know what I mean? And appraisers and engineers can't go on the property without, uh, you know, without the property owner giving their consent. Uh, it's a little different for appraisers, however, okay? 
and IDOT is not going on people's property to conduct appraisals unless they have the permission. Okay, and that may mean your property may be appraised in the roadway. You know what I mean? If that be the case, but uh, that, that's the, the status there. So. Anybody else? Any questions? Do they have particular stages that this is all going about in and a particular plant that they're going to be putting out where we know the whole operation? Meaning what? The different stages and if this is ever going to come into eminent domain? Well, I mean, what, what during the next year, uh, after the record of the decision, when they start to then go out and do the appraisal work, they'll start offers of acquisition, okay? And that can take any type of role from people agreeing to, to the offer price to all going to condemnation, going to a trial in, in Will County, et cetera. So. Does it have a particular area that you have that you have a paper that will be the houses affected? Well, there's a route for the Ileana at the present time, yes. And is there a website for that? Uh, I couldn't tell you what it is off the top of my head. Ileana.org. That's what I thought, yeah. And oh, Ileana.com and? Ileana.org. Okay. And the appraisals are going to be based more on land, property, or is it going to be based on the home? Well, it just depends. It depends on what property they need to acquire. It has all kinds of factors go into the value of a person's property and other other uh, situations. So yeah, there was there was a lot of discontentment with the other operation that they had involved in a certain area. A lot of the homes were appraised based on the land value, not the home value, and mm -hmm. there was a lot of there was a lot of discord about that. So this is based on the home values too. Well, I I, I don't know exactly their methodology they're using. It just gonna, there's a lot of factors that go into there is. The, the appraisal of someone's yeah. property. That's what the, a lot of people are concerned about. They're trying to figure out that and trying to get a hold of the appraisers that are very nervous about it. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea yeah, how many okay. homes are affected along the corridor? If I remember, it's not too many. Unlike the airport when they say well, is it, well, is it, is it homes or property? Because the homestead may not be inside the area of the road. They're not going to acquire the home. Right. They're really only going to acquire the property that they need to put in the put in the. Uh, and I want to say there was only about 15 homes in the path. Owned by Wilmington. There's, there's approximately homes. 50 properties. The property owners will have to be relocated. 50. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So there's about uh, close to 300 properties that will be affected. Mm -hmm. Some some form of fashion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. the opportunity. And, and Mr. Barber knows we're holding you. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Do you have a comment? Sure. Anybody so else from the audience that wish to address the board? With non finance administration, let's be clear. Uh, well, this is our public hearing for the 2014 2015 uh, fiscal year. So uh, I make a motion opening the. Uh, Public hearing for the budget of the fiscal year 2014-2015. Second. The motion on the floor and there is a second. Are there any questions or discussion? Roll call. Wayman? Yes. Coleman? Yes. Charles? Yes. Meyer? Yes. 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 Hey, just, have, just for uh, historical factors, this is my diamond budget. This is my diamond budget. Two budget, two budget, two budget. It's 25. That's silver. This is my 25th budget. So I figured it out. It just dawned on me on the way here today. This is my 25th. Uh, but anyway, this uh, the whole budget process starts with a five-year financial plan, which we completed in the fall, which looks at the next five years, not just the next year. On that five-year financial plan, which we approved back in December, we begin the budget process. And the department heads request re make their requests in January, and I do the final revenue projections at the end of January. Then the first draft of the budget comes out in early February. I sit down with the village president and we work on a second draft. And then uh, the finance committee is given that second draft in mid-February. The first Saturday in March, then, the finance committee sits down with the administrator, the village president, and all the departments. And we have what we call our marathon workshop session on the budget where we analyze the line item. We've been using this process now for several years. I believe since Brian became chair of finance, so we could reduce the amount of time we spent at the board workshop on every line item of the budget. And the finance committee can say, Here it is, here's the budget, we'll go page by page, not line by line. 
at the village board level to see if anybody has any questions or concerns. Um, and that is our budget workshop, which we had, uh, I believe it was the last Monday in March, uh, we had our budget workshop. Uh, after that, the fourth draft of the budget then goes to public hearing. Uh, it was put on the website. Uh, the notice was published, and the budget was available for public inspection as of, I believe, April 23rd. Uh, this is the second year of our 0% tax levy increase. Uh, so there is no new revenue to the general fund this year other than the new fingerprinting fee for concealed carry registrations. Uh, the Beecher Police Department is a location where you can apply for a concealed carry permit and get fingerprinted. We have the technology to do that. And the chief has estimated <coughs> a certain number. So that's really our only new revenue that we'll be receiving this year in the general fund other than the increases in the video gaming tax that we're anticipating from two, two other establishments, which is the video gaming licenses. Uh, the wages for personnel this year were 2.2% 2 per, 2 increase for all non-union employees. The Teamsters employees uh, agreed to no raise this year, but they're getting their health insurance now for the Teamsters union as opposed to the village's health insurance plan. And there's uh, a significant savings to the Teamster employees as a result of that, and also a significant savings to so it was a win-win for both sides. Uh, the, the PPO rates for non-union employees dropped 8.3%. Again, good news for us, paying the coverage for the employee, good news for them, because they have to pay a portion of their dependent coverage. However, the HMO rates did go up 5% this coming year. Higher rapid pension employer contributions dropped, actually dropped a little bit to 11.56, 11 11.58, it's 11.56 next year. This year it's 11.58% for all employees for pension. That's the, the, the village's cost. Uh, no new employees are scheduled to be hired in the coming year. However, we do have a part-time code enforcement officer now budgeted uh, for 20 hours a week uh, for the entire year. And Public Works has uh, about 1,000 hours of part-time labor budgeted in their budget. Uh, we're going to buy three new vehicles out of this budget, two new squads for the PD, uh, the general fund, and an F-350 pickup with toolbox to replace uh, Floyd Berger's 2004 utility truck using 39000 from a capital equipment sinking plant. Uh, three dump trucks are scheduled to be repainted this year. Uh, our, uh, one, of the, one of our bigger projects is our Safe Routes to Schools project, uh, which we are going to have flashing solar lighting uh, for the, the crossings for the junior high, the grade school, and the high school. That project is costing 148000 <coughs> Excuse me, but 127,000 of that is being funded by a state grant, and the remainder is coming out of, out of our motor fuel tax fund. Uh, three subdivisions are receiving new street poles and signs uh, this coming year. In fact, the new, some of the new signs in Hunters Chase just went up Friday, I believe. And we plan on completing Hunters Chase, Hunters Chase West, and help me here, bud. What are the other two that we're doing in the fall? Is it Curry Park and Nantucket? Yes. And Hunters <coughs> Chase East. In so all we'll have left is Prairie Crossings and Prairie Crossing South, I believe. Um, we're going to install, and later on tonight at this meeting, this budget gets passed, we're going to ask the board to approve uh, the installation of two new VFDs on a booster station. Uh, we hope that this effort will, will maintain more consistent pressure in the system and hopefully reduce water main breaks. That project is going to be 17.5. Uh, $39,900 is budgeted. Uh, but will only be spent in the water department if the column pipe in well three develops pit holes, reducing the efficiency of the well. Uh, the water and sewer committee, or the public works committee, excuse me, I got to get used to saying public works committee, agreed to fund that every year, but not spend the money until the column pipe shows the efficiency. We just don't know when it's going to happen. It's a matter of when, not if. But until the when occurs, we have plenty of time to deal with that. So we'll budget for that. Also, we're budgeting 17300 in the water and sewer departments to upgrade the SCADA system, which is the computer system that runs our water and sewer system. Uh, the Public Works Committee is recommending that every year we turn one-third of the valves in the water system, so we're going to budget $7,000 every year to do that. As you can see, the water and sewer funds have a capital money to spend. Uh, the gearbox and electrical components and clarifier number two of the sewer plant are scheduled to be replaced with 15000 and then there's $36,125 budgeted for an update to our land use plan incorporating the Leanne Expressway. We have been told now by IDOT 
and by Will County that that funding will be made uh, available directly to the municipalities. We just don't know when. We have a meeting on May 7th to find out more. Uh, we are also tonight going to consider a thermoplastic contract, uh, $25,000 in this budget for thermoplastic strengthening of streets, all the streets in the village. And we have $20,000 budgeted for crack sealing later this fall. Our streets really took a beating this winter and, and it's going to be definitely need for some crack sealing. Uh, relocation of the village hall after the renovation of 625 Dixie Highway is also in the budget. And $4,500 is budgeted as a license, licensing incentive program for public works employees. Uh, the major changes to the finances in the budget for the coming year <coughs> include water, sewer, and refuse rate increases costing an average uh, resident $22.80 more in the coming year than it did last year. So from the village's point of view, it's going to cost you more as a village resident $22.80 this year than last year to live in the village. None of that is based on property tax. All of that is based on water, sewer, and refuse rates. Uh, there's no new property taxes for 14 coming from the village. Uh, staff will try to maintain the zero levy also for 2015. And the harsh 2013 winter and the expanded 2013 road resurfacing program may push our next major resurfacing program back to about 2016 or 2017. Overall, these are the major storylines to this year's budget. Uh, the bottom line is general fund is balanced. No reserve cash is used to balance general. There is some reserve cash being used in water and sewer funds to fund capital items only. Mr. Chairman, that's the budget. Any questions to the administrator? I make a motion closing the public hearing for the budget of the fiscal year of 2014 and 2015. Second. One thing before we do. Is there any comments or questions from the audience? The motion on the floor, and there is a second. Any questions of the motion? Roll call. Brian, you made the motion. Thank you, Senator. Scott. Scott. Barry? Yes. Eric? Yes. Fire? Yes. Yes. Coleman? Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, we now need to the overall budget, so I make a, a motion for the resolution number 2014-04. For uh, adopting the budget for the fiscal year of 2014 to 2015. Second. There's a motion and there's a second. Any questions or comments? Roll call. Yes. 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 Uh, the next item on our, our agenda is concerning the uh, ordinance of appropriation for the fiscal year 2014-2015. <clears throat> and there's, I, as I've talked with Bob, there's a little inconsistency of what we have here. Right now, we had originally appropriated $390,000 for securing the building and uh, doing everything inside, which would be broken down as $125,000 for the building and uh, 265000 for uh, doing any of the rehabbing of the building. Uh, what Bob's indicated is based on what we're hearing right now from a lot of the contractors is that the overall cost to rehab the building may exceed our expectation of 260, 265000 So kind of cleaning up what Bob has in the write-up here, the, the idea is to allow us in the future to appropriate uh, 120,000 in uh, in lieu of anything else that may go on to allow us to complete the project. Do I have that correct, Bob? Yeah, but you could drop it to the 270 if you want. It doesn't matter because it's going to require a vote of the board either way. I was just trying to avoid having to go through a, a supplemental appropriation which the auditors state. I'm just trying to clean up the original. We originally had put on the 390 for the overall project, <coughs> what all I, in cost. What I forgot to do was take off the price of the building, which we already bought. From the original appropriation, right. so you can remove 125 Five. from the 390, which would make it 265. Correct. But I believe we budgeted 270 because we saved five grand on the closing of the building. So you can probably get away with 270. Is that correct? Right. That's what we have in the account. But I got to reserve some money to pay taxes. So 270 would be the right number. But based on what you're seeing from the bids coming in. 
this board would still, by vote, have to amend the budget and approve a contract. All this would do is we don't have to amend the supplemental if we have to go over this the only That's why bid, I looked it in there. The only bid that we've received is the roofing bid, and that came in within budget. The other bids weren't due until the May. Well, when we went to the all-in, everything inclusive, it went over what we expected. The, the first, the first, the first bid, time we wanted, the first bid came in, came in high, and it was only one bid right. plus the bid. It was not to our specs, so we asked that we rejected that bid, and then we start over again. And then by doing that, then we removed um, the roofing from it and the heating. heating from it, and the heating is working, so that's not going to be part of it anymore. And we we, we changed the ceiling. Changed them. Yeah, we, we, we did the bids. Yeah, there was some there was some stuff that was supposed to be alternates. Correct. That were included in there, and they weren't itemized. So we have no idea what those alternates were that were supposed to be separate to right. know what the true bid was. So, so any other questions to that for Bob? Doesn't matter to me if you want to make it the same as the budget. That's fine with me. You can make that number two separate. Or you can leave it at 390, but knowing that we're not going to go over 270, unless this board says so. 270. Okay. Uh, I make a motion for ordinance number 1210. For the appropriation uh, for the fiscal year 2014-2015 of 270. Thousand for the project at 625 Dixie Highway. Motion for, and there is a second. Everybody clear on the board? <coughs> Any discussion? Roll call. Great for a person. I had, so, I had a question. It, what, so, what was staff's recommendation? Was the 390? Is that what you felt comfortable, Mayor? Bottom line is, is either way it's got to come to that before the board, so why don't we just leave it the way it was proposed, and then if, we, if it ends up, if we run into trouble because of the bids that came in, whatever case could be, we have to come back to the board anyway. Okay. This ordinance was drafted the day after we opened that one bid, I panicked. You want to make it 270? 270. And that was the motion. <coughs> Concerning and, and Bob has talked about it uh, when he was reviewing our budget. It's concerning the uh, uh, safe route to school. This would be uh, appropriate out of the motor and fuel tax. It would be the village's portion of it. So uh, I make a motion for the resolution 2012 uh, 11. Correct, right? Correct. No, the resolution 2014 45. Authorizing the appropriation of uh, MFT funds for the fiscal year of 2014-2015, according to the proposed budget. Motion on the floor, and there's a second. There's a second. And questions or discussion? Roll call. Clearly. Yes. 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 Clearly. Yes. 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 Uh, the other item that was in, believe it or not, the back of your, your budget, packet that Bob gave us some time ago was the personnel uh, manual for village employees. Um, it was provided to us under separate cover a few weeks ago for us to go through. If anybody has any comments? I, I will say that all of the changes in that manual we have discussed before, some of it was long ago last fall. This is the formalization of the Consideration of John's thing about the licenses? Yes. yes. Okay. That was one of the things that we had hanging out there, wanted to make sure we had anything. All the amendments were made that we were talking about. Okay. Well, that's why we're waiting with this to make sure all those are done. And I hope now we don't have to amend this manual for maybe as long as we're here. <coughs> now that you said something, probably will. Oh. <laughs> uh, any comments? 
let's uh, make a resolution, uh, a motion for resolution 2014-06. Uh, adopting the revised personnel manual for the village employees. Second. There's a motion on the floor. There is a second. Any questions or discussion? Roll call. Yes. 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 Uh, the next item is concerning the job description manual. Uh, this also was provided to us a few weeks ago. Uh, if anybody has any comments on that, this is the one for the MM2. Yeah, this is takes care of all the right, licensing and stuff. We actually wrote every job description uh, in the village, not rewrote them, but edited them because it's been since 1998 since we've updated this manual. Basically, it's very important to have a good job description manual, uh, not only for your hiring practices, but also for your time. You notice there's a lot of language in there regarding how many pounds you can lift and all that. So if you're expected to lift up to 25 pounds for your job and you decide to lift 500 pounds, that becomes an issue. So that's why you have to have a good job description. Any comments? Okay, I make a motion for resolution. 2014-07. Uh, for the revised uh, job description manual for the village. Second. The motion and there is a second. Questions or discussion? Roll call. Really? Yes. 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 And the last thing on your finance has to do with uh, the village tax rate for the uh, for 2013 collectible and 2014, not today. Then 14 to 15. No, this is the uh, actual tax rate that's coming out in 14. Okay. The tax bill is coming out May 1st. Uh, the, the big picture here is evidently the, the village's assessed value has, has gone down. Um, therefore, the tax rate uh, would go from <coughs> 0. 0.6459 to 0.7012 cover that loss of 7.9% of assessed value. We're still below the overall cap that the village can go to by 0.19. Uh, um, we've, not, well, we've received no new taxes since the 2012 year since we froze our levy at $605,333. Uh, Bob's provided us a table and comparison chart in our packet. If anybody has any comments or questions. What we want to explain to the residents who are going to be opening their tax bills here in about a week and a half is we did not raise our levy. It does not mean that your tax bill may, it does not mean your tax bill does not go up. It means that if, if other property has been assessed lower than you and your assessment didn't change, you're making up for the difference. And that could be the case here. So we can't, you know, misrepresent the people and say, we didn't raise taxes. We didn't. We didn't raise our levy. But they end up, may end up paying more in tax because their neighbor might be paying less. It just depends on how that works. Also, we have no control over the tax they might. But usually it's the village that gets the burden of complaints when the tax bills come out. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Public buildings and properties, parks and recreation, Trustee Warren. Uh, park rule ordinance. I need to get with Tim on that and we'll give you more uh, update on that. Uh, Welton Stat Park prep update. Buddy, do you have anything? Or? Uh, I don't know. Bathrooms are out there. We'll probably be starting to mow here in the next uh, week or two. Well, you got I your would line, soon, right? The egg lime can? The egg lime's in, yeah. we got to transfer that over. The only difference is, you know, getting out there so we're not going to be making ruts through the, uh, you know, the fields. Right. So we got to let things dry out a little bit. Okay. Weather permitting. Uh, update on the electrical connections. I know the junction box is in at the north field. That, I um, just got the, we'll be picking the poles up from um, Lane Western tomorrow. Okay. I'm shooting by the end of the week, have everything on our end completed and installed, and just waiting for ComEd to do their drops. Okay. Well, hopefully we have some decent weather. I mean, it's supposed to rain again tomorrow, but it, it Think, thinking that still if I have three good days, I'll have them up. Okay, good. I'm in the same issue, Scott. We had a pole in Fireman's Park, an electrical pole, that leaned in the high winds today, and ComEd had to come out and put a new pole in, but we don't believe it's the pole that they can make a connection to. 
it's no, no, it, it's actually the one further south yeah. from where we where you were at, right? Where we put the electrical box. No, it was the one to the south. It was rotting out. It rotted out at the bottom. Okay. So it was hanging over. But I don't believe they did too much damage going out there, Bob. I guided them from the north end. So. Yeah, it looked like when I was out there, it looked like some of those holes were. Yeah, leaving. there's there's a couple that were. Leaving. There's a couple over there. Ours are fine. Okay. We also told uh, Future Rec that if, if need be, if we have everything set up and ComEd hasn't been out, that they could use a couple portable generators. Yeah, there's a way that you can do that, yes. So we'll, we'll get those up and running as soon as we can. Uh, update on the grading uh, and adding of limestone to the paths in Lions Park. Well, that'll, as we, you know, as, as one project is done, that'll be the next one that gets done. That'll be like a two-day project. <clears throat> okay. Um, replacement of the roof on the building at 625 Dixie Highway. After a bid letting and solicitation of over 16 contractors, bids were open on Monday, April 21st, and reviewed. Five bids were received and open. I guess 16 came to pick them up. Five came in, correct? Mm -hmm. Well, we still see 16 roofers in the area. Okay. Commercial. And out of that 16, five bids came in and were received and opened. And the lowest bidder was Lang Voice Roofing in the amount of $32,905. The budget for the project was $34,000. Uh, regardless of what we do with the building, we're still going to need a new roof. And uh, the roof comes in with a 20 year warranty. So I'd like to make a motion to accept the bid from Langlois roofing in the amount of $32,905. Second motion on the floor. And there's a second trustee clearing. We, we've had experience with this roofer before they put the roof on the, the village original home. municipal building. Yes. Discussion or questions? <coughs> Roll call. Clearing. Yes. Errors, no. Fire. Yes. Confirms. Yes. No. Yes. 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 I think that one will be for the record. Okay. Um, for the 625 Dixie Highway project, uh, Mike Stanula reports that many pr prints have been sold this time, this time around. The village should receive several bids. Bids will be open at 4 p.m. on Thursday, May 22nd and then considered by the Village Board at the Wednesday, May 28th meeting. And then we already talked about the fact that 270000 remains in the account for the project. Anything to add to that, Bob? I'll keep up bid. I would vote around it. Okay, good. A lot better than only one uh, the first time around. Uh, consider a motion approving the plan for the relocation and reconstruction of buildings in Fireman's Park. I think with your bids, everyone received this small rendering. You guys get this colored uh, picture. And then on the second page, there's an actual drawing of the park uh, showing the location of these uh, revised buildings. Um, Feature Rec would like to relocate the concession stand from Fireman's 1, you know, where, it, where it's at right now on the east side of Fireman's Bald Island, and um, to the west of the picnic area by the bathrooms, so it can be centrally located in the park. And one thing about that location, too, is they'll be able to serve uh, for the foot traffic over that footbridge going into the school property as well. Uh, the Existing beer stand would be torn down and a larger picnic pavilion would take its place, which could be used year-round by the public. Currently, the building remains locked. As everyone knows, uh, the garage doors are locked up since it is used strictly for storage when there's not an event uh, through the uh, 4th of July. A uh, new two-car garage would be built northeast of the new beer stand and Beecher Rec and the 4th of July Commission would have each, they would each have a bay for storage of equipment and materials. This solves the problem as far as the uh, storage and the 
uh, public use and, and so on with that building. Feature Rec and the 4th of July Commission have approved this plan after renderings and much discussion. When I say much discussion, um, it has been a long road to get to this plan uh, as far as the setup for the beer, the storage, the concession stand, and everything else. And it has come, uh, the Feature Rec 4th of July Commission have approved the uh, renderings. Um, the IDNR also approved the plan after being presented, uh, so we did not violate the OSLIC grant. Uh, Bob sent a letter down to uh, Springfield and asked if we could, um, when we remove one building, if we can add another building, and they had no problem with that at all as far as changing any of that uh, regarding the OSLIC grant, because that's always been my big thing to get approval for that, um, but they had no problem at all. Um, they saw that it would only enhance the park uh, versus, uh, you know, making it uh, a worse, uh, worse than the original plan was. So does anybody have any questions about this drawing or additions? Yes. The relocation of the Concession stand? Concession stand. Is there electrical in that building, Bob? Electrical in which building? The concession stand. The current yes. one? Yes. Yes. So you're going to need to get electrical out to that concession stand. I correct? think. Can you bring a new one out there? There's a, there's places available for them to tap into that. Because there's electric, you know, going right to that area. Right. You need to make sure whatever you're feeding that, it's coming on an existing feed that it's big enough, <coughs> both the original and this new one. I believe they upsized it. Brian, they, we just got through trenching for two new boxes over there, and well, there used to be you know like outlets in the tree that were mm -hmm. one. To, well, either one, the trees are gone and they're down, right. and they've they've uh, upgraded it and, and installed it the proper way. We so have a, we have a two hundred yard service for right. those back right now that were built at the outside point. Mm -hmm. We're tapping off that two hundred yard provided service for the concessions, which is more than what they have now. I believe right now they only have. That's one question. The other item you indicated was you're you're looking to put in a two-car garage. It's a two-car garage over there. The, it looks I, like a two-car two garage a door, but that thing's a lot bigger than a two-car garage. It, it's has just changed the geology. They're, they're building a storage building. Imagine a two-car garage, it's slightly bigger. Because I mean, you're you're looking at a four-car width. Yeah, you are. But there's two doors on it. One for Beecher Act, one for four for John. A bigger gap in between the wall. Also, the water and sewer are up to that concession. We can get that out to the concession stand as well over there because we have the bathrooms right there. You're just going to have to get into that concrete. Or how are you going to get? How are you going to get into the sewer? The sewer. Uh, there's a yeah. uh, the sanitary main runs right through the middle of the park right there. It goes and down Hodges. Yes. And then it dumps into a, a two different manhole structures, and then it goes over to the creek, um, or actually underneath it, to the pumping station. And the yeah. water main is right there also. A big discussion on the uh, beer, beer stand is to be able to use that year-round. You know, uh, with the ice rink down there in the middle of the winter, with the concession stand a little bit closer to that, um, and you know, people are able to go in there and use it for picnics and whatever they want to do. I think that's going to be a big plus for that for this area. Are we uh, going to put doors on the major concession area? Yeah, we're going to put garage doors on the, the rolling doors. Right. We're not going to be the garage rail doors. Rolling shutters. We're going to be rolling, okay. rolling shutters. I get yelled at when I say shutters. The rolling garage. The rolling, the, the rolling steel doors. Right. The, the question I have is, are you guys going to have a fence going between that new out structure all the way over to the old Big Six location? So there will be a fence put in between those two areas. Now, what about going back to the, the old structure? Are you going to go north? Are you going to go west to put the, that three le that two legs of that fence in? The new beer stand is located further north than the present beer stand. The, the plan is to have a fence go around 
the outside of that building, and that fence will be removed after the fourth. It will be a removable fence, very similar to what we put by the stage now. Except this one will be eight feet tall, probably by the building. And it's only going to be in place for tractors for a cure, if they want, on the fourth of July. Other than that, the fence comes out and gets stored in the little way. So if we want to keep fences out of parks. We want the park to be open. Except for that one that parallels the ditch. That one stays, yes. Now, you said it's going to be wide, larger than the existing beer stand? This new beer stand is larger than the existing beer stand. So the old foundation needs to be removed? Yes. Yeah, everything's been yeah. shot. The concrete shot, it's, everything's basically shot in that building. So the whole building would have to come out. And we'll move the building north to keep from perfecting the location. Based on the beer stand, we also the same location, it's just slightly more if it's longer and wider. Oh, it's the exact same location. Yeah. That's why that oak tree that's in the beer garden area is what you're trying to avoid. That's why you want to do Right. When we move it north, we have to take out two trees, but they're ash trees anyway. But yeah, that oak is in that southeast corner. And they're, they, that's they, an old oak. 200 year old oak. A lot of discussion went into or, or design, I should say, by by Mr. Kowalski as far as trying to save the trees. You have a question. Can you tell me the year when the other foundation, when the other bird garden was built? Oh, they built all my time. They have a oh. that goes back to the 60s, I think. Before the 60s? 60s. Yeah. Well, it wasn't known as a beer garden in the city. In the 70s, it was a bingo. It was in the bingo. 70s, the beer garden was north to south along the parking area. That was the bingo stand that had been there for we were in the 60s. Yeah, in 60s. It was always used for bingo. And then, you know, like uh, what we were talking about as far as the beer stand was right along the parking lot. And that was taken out and destroyed. That was so, the park. Yeah. And that's Shot already, the concrete shot from that time? Yeah, it's a, oh, it's a slab. So those slabs, they, slab, yeah. Yeah, they crack and heave and, and everything else. Okay. So, so in order to put a new one in, there's no sense in, in keeping the old one, from what I understand. Back they never work they, put, they put garage floors in, they didn't put sides on. So it's one concrete slab, right. only so thick, and that's it. So any, any heaving from the frost, is going to start making it bubble and crack. And roots from the trees right. that are. Well, that's the thing, there's so many trees right there surrounding it. So it's basically in the 70s, you said, or 60s? Oh, it's 60s. I'd say 60s. Easy 60s. Yeah. Oh. It's got a tin roof, doesn't it? Fiberglass. Fiberglass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's been a long time. I think that was, the fiberglass was replaced, the old tin that was there. It's a tin roof. It was a tin roof with some fiberglass on it, right? Yeah, it was, a it was added, was and then they glass. started. They figured that's add some lights. So they started yeah, putting skylights. Skylights. Yeah. 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 Also, this is going to be what a foot, two feet higher when at you walk least, in. At least, yes. So it's going to be higher because I don't know if you guys walked in the old one, but it was. Yeah, it was real. It was low, and it was. You know, it was kind of confining, and I think this is going to be more open. If you, as far as it being higher, what the, the goal was was if, when they put the, uh, what do they call it? Again, not the reefer unit, but the. Uh, Trust? No, the actual unit itself to serve beer, what they call it. Oh, the trailer. We call it beer trailer. Beer trailer. Mm -hmm. The original idea was they used to put a tent back here, and that's why you have that jet out. Right. So basically, everything's got to be tall enough to get that trailer in there. So, yes, it is higher. The other thing when you're getting these rolling steel doors, your height is what you want. With a garage door, your height is limited. Right. Right. Yeah, so these shutters are going to be up in the up position unless we have to pull them down. Right. So you know, because of the wind and the rain and, and everything else. Right. So and we didn't want to be able to, when, if anybody's using it, you want, want to look up the garage first. They want to look at whatever the building is. So. Okay. This is going to happen right after the tractors for the cure, I think, is going to start the uh, construction once the major events are over. We believe that the labor put up this building on here. 
and the materials are all in the supply chain you have to pay for. It. And the largest cost of that, I believe, is going to be the cement slab. Scott, are you looking to also move the concession stand after? Concession you stand is going to be it's going to be later. I, I think um, the, it it all depends. The the actual timeline. The only thing we know of is if we have a successful fourth, we will begin construction okay. then. As far as how we get, what we get, so on and so forth, they haven't worked out those details yet. We had to get past this to make everybody happy before we even come up with what our next step is as far as what we're building, how much it's going to cost, who's going to pay for what, who's going to build what. We had to get past this, and this took us. Right. So we don't have a timeline on, on the concession stand. The concession stand is going to stay, you know, it's going to stay there until we get the new one built. built. So well, that's why I figured you guys were going to try to do that in the beginning of the summer before the fourth, and then when the fourth opens, you get rid of the other one. It's theoretically possible that the new concession stand will be a phase two part of this project and maybe not be built for a year or two. Right. Because we directly do some fundraising. To, to raise money for their concession stand. And we won't tear the old one down until that new one is probably up and running. So the goal would be to get it all done, but there's still some answer questions right. yet. Here's weather is involved, funding is involved. So. And we want to get the style and the, the look of it and everything. It's all got to blend in, you know. So um, we're looking for a, a I'd like to make a motion approving the plan for the relocation and reconstruction of buildings in Fireman's Park. Second. If there's a motion, there is a second. Any questions or discussion? Roll call. Bailey? Yes. Coleman? Yes. 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 Meyer? Yes. Aaron? Yes. Bailey? Yes. That's it. Did I make my report? Planning, building, and zoning for here. The building department left in court was supposed to be reviewed. The committee met to discuss the fence ordinance and architectural codes. The committee discussed changes to the fence ordinance, and although it agrees the village needs to change a solid fence with a with a pool concept, there was a difference of opinion on how to replace the current ordinance. The committee also discussed the need for any for an architectural code. The per proposal was received from Tesca to assist with this project, but the fee was considered too high and was not budgeted. A scaled-down proposal was requested that, and would only cover commercial properties along Dixie Highway. Tesco would review all building permits in the commercial district along Dixie Highway for compliance to the codes and then make a recommendation to the committee um, who would make a final decision. Uh, planning and zoning uh, Committee meeting for April was canceled. The next meeting is scheduled for May 22nd, and we are waiting on agenda. I don't know if we'll have one yet for the meeting. I know we don't have a secretary, so I might end up taking the minutes of that meeting for you because both Donna and Drew, Donna and Drew, will be here. I would love taking minutes. That is very important. Safety yeah, police department monthly report is included. Uh, code enforcement monthly report for March is also included for your review. <coughs> Excuse me. Consider a motion authorizing the chief of police to place orders for two <coughs> squad cars in an amount not to exceed $50,000. This would allow for the new cars to be street ready in time for the 4th of July. Um, I'd like to make a motion authorizing the Chief of Police to order two, two new cards and the amount not to exceed $50,000. Second. There's a motion on the floor or was a second. Any questions or discussion? Roll call. Cleary? Yes. Aaron? Yes. Meyer? Yes. Rose? Yes. 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 School District Safety and Security Update to be provided by the Chief. The crisis management review meeting is being scheduled for June with all local public safety officials and school district administration. This meeting is host, being hosted by the village. Chief, you want to update us? Yeah, annual, annually we uh, do that crisis management review that involves members of uh, 
the fire district, the police department, uh, the mayor, Bob Barber, is in there, along with uh, the principals from all three schools and uh, the superintendent. Also, as far as the security update, we visited uh, the daycares and all the schools to make sure that uh, they will be compliant with the signs that needs to be posted in reference to the new uh, uh, Firearm Concealed Carry Act. And we have provided them with the signs to put in their windows if they needed them. And that's all I have on security. Thank you, Chief. Uh, next will engage participation and usage update, Chief. When we, uh, when we uh, take that step up to Nexel Engage, we haven't yet. That'll come in the new budget year. We're still on the regular Nexel. Um, I attended the, the senior breakfast and gave uh, a brief uh, uh, talk about Nexel and the benefits of Nexel. We had an additional 25 people sign up for Nexel after that presentation. 26 now. 26, okay. Um, Currently, we're right around 200 are signed up for the emails with about 180 signed up for the smartphones or the text messages. I really believe Nexel Engage will get us to that next level because it offers so much more technology, the alerts, and when, when that happens and that transition happens, I'm planning on making a presentation to the Chamber of Commerce once we get this. Nixle will engage, and when they see the benefits of it, I'm sure you're going to have a lot of people sign up for it, because now we can do groups. We, we can't do groups right now. When we send a message, it's all or nobody. With the Nixle will engage, we can have as many different groups as we want, and that's a big benefit there. Okay, thank you, Chief. Uh, next will also in my report, I'd like to uh, um, Make a statement on the Fourth of July. On, uh, <coughs> excuse me. The, as you know, the Fourth of July Commission um, has received the uh, 2014 Camaro, um, and I've been notified this evening that probably tomorrow we will have tickets available for sale. We've been uh, questioned by several people wondering where are the tickets and where can we get them, and uh, uh, we got a call tonight that we'll probably have them. So, just to bring you up to date on that. Any questions of the chief or myself? With that, that completes my report. You can the board's committee, Trustee Burke. Water Department and Sewer Department monthly reports are in close for your review. Uh, Public Works annual report. Uh, buddy, you want to hit some hot spots? Oh, I'm ready to get shot at. <laughs> Um, well, the first thing I can say is, you know, I threw in pictures this year of the Public Works Department. You know, they're in black and white, and I didn't have the opportunity to put in color. But I thought it was real important that you could uh, actually identify the faces with the people that are employed by the village in the Public Works Department. Um, I mean, two of the guys look alike. That's Jim and Steven, so good luck with that one. Uh, the Water Department, I'll zoom through this. The one thing that comes out most to me this year is uh, two, two different things. I don't know if you realize it, but we had 33 water main breaks this last winter. Most of it, um, I mean for the year of 2013, most of them done in the fall and the winter time due to the freezing and uh, thawing of the ground, which leads us to why um, the town looks like Germany right now and we are working very hard to do all these restorations. We've already gone through six uh, uh, truckloads of dirt so you're going to have to, hopefully, you'll, you know, um, I don't know work with us and, and, and be patient. Uh, we have a hard time getting the dirt right now uh, because of the fact every time it rains, you know, it, it, it puts us back a couple days with getting it. We've done a lot of tree restoration. Um, it, it's all a work in progress. Plus, we have a couple other side jobs that we're doing, like you see on Penfield. I have that ditch that's cut out. That's one of the first things we'll be attacking here in the next two weeks, so we'll get that eyesore out of the way. Um, you can see also that we, we spent a lot of money on um, stone this last year. You can attribute that to the main breaks. A couple of other projects that we had that we are finishing up. The Elm Street water main, um, that's been up and online and, and ready to roll for a long time. We just have to go back in there and do the restorations on that. I'll go ahead and touch base with Prairie. That water main is, is job is completed right now. Um, it's been up and online for over a week. 
Now we have to go back in there and do some restoration. I mean, we, we hit a couple niches, believe it or not, every time you dug into the ground, we were hitting sanitary lines, um, the service lines that they had there um, were ridiculous. I, you know, um, uh, Carol, her, her line, believe it or not, it had poly lining in it and we had a hard time tracing it even back to the house. So they all have new service lines right now and they have been running for over a week. Um, the salt, we will be addressing that this year. You're going to see that we're going to be purchasing more because of the fact we did burn through just about everything we had. We had enough left at the end of the year probably for four, at least four complete um, saltings of the town. But I mean, we, we've been stockpiling our salt for probably about three or four years, and we're you know going to end up having to do that. I'm not sure what the dollar amount is that we're going to spend, but we're going to get as much. 78000 78000 So um, I do want you to know, too, that you know with the 33 water main breaks that we had, if we were to farm that out, you can figure right around $4,000 per break. So by doing this in town, I mean, we, it, it averaged out to be probably right around $132,000 worth of water main breaks. You know, so um, I want to, you know, commend my department or the village's department that these guys went above and beyond between snow plowing and everything uh, in the time that we invested in it was pretty tedious. Um, that's about all I have for my report if there's any questions. The Prairie Connection goes, it's, we've made the tie and it, it's I'm tied in. off to the, to the properties. Yes, everything's done. Everything's tied in. You have two valves were installed. You know, we have the ability to shut down. Actually, it works out better if there's a problem on Pasadena, if there's a problem on Melrose, I can cut up the two blocks in half and feed from one direction or the other now. So it, the looping was a smart thing to do. All you have left is restoration. Yeah, and that's, I'm, <laughs> weather permitting, I, I'm going to try to expedite that this week. I'm trying to get a handle, I know we spent a lot of time talking about the meter program and Buddy, you know, the $10,000 that Buddy thinks we cut from the meter program and all that. Trying to get a handle. Last year we put in 46 new meters. And that's correct. Right? Correct. And we and spent they budgeted 10,000, and it was costing us 460 for installation. But that 10,000 of meters, like you said, 46. I can explain to you. We spent that money, but the the cost of a one inch meter versus a you know you're almost paying paying two thousand dollars for a two inch or an inch and a half. And I you mean, put some of those in. Last yes, we year. did. We put three of them in it. It took the big chunk out of it, which lowered it. Um, why we weren't able to do that. Now this village board here, I want to say about six years, no, maybe not even six years ago, we made a commitment to um, go through the, the meter uh, up, upgrading of the um, system. And that's why that $10,000 was there. Now you have to realize that when I started here 16 years ago, I want to say three years prior to that, they bought the SR2 meters, which were the old high heads, and they were rebuilt. Now, AWWA standards has these meters. Their only accuracy are, are guaranteed for like 15 years. You far exceeded that. So mm -hmm. I think that's probably one of the biggest reasons we have a water loss ratio to pumped. Do you still I mean, have meters in the system? Pardon me? Yes, I do. We, we still have a couple of those in the meter, I mean, in the system. When we started this, we had um, one of the biggest things we had was uh, we had Badger meters, Hersey meters, Census meters and slumbergees, I mean, you had three of those. The idea was that we would be one meter, keep the parts on, on the shelf, and you know, one meter, one supplier, and be responsible that, that direction. And the smartest thing to do reading-wise for the meters, um, for the residents, and for this village. And where we're at right now, um, they've gone as far, you know, like I said, the new meters that they have out there, it's all inductive picket. There is no moving parts in it. So we don't have to worry about them slowing down, you know, and we've been in, uh, implementing this for probably the last year and a half to two years. Uh, the meter program, I want to say there's probably about 600 meters out there left to be changed. You, you had your report by meter pits replaced one. How many meter pits do we have left? Bob, there's, there's three that I know of, but you never really can tell. I mean, I mean, we can be digging out there and lo and behold, it'll pop up. But they did, um, before I was here, I mean, all they did was like bury the evidence. They would disconnect it from out in the street and they'd put a piece of pipe into it and then they'd bury it. So the pit's still there with the meters now. Right, exactly. And a lot of times there's, two, there's a valve in there and the way we find it is, you know, the water will protrude from it, it'll rot out and then we'll, okay, so we just cut it out and reconnect it. Thank you, buddy. Thank you.
Um, and also kind of I'm touched with the water meter replacement. Um, but me and Brian have been in contact. Uh, we understand that you know, there were some cuts in the budget. We are figuring out ways to do, still, still accomplish with less. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We will still get some stuff done. We're looking at different ways of, of you know, randomly picking some, looking at trends to identify this rather than just going at it willy-nilly and just going and replacing every meter. So it, we, we will be getting in touch with you, you know, as time progresses. But this is something that you know me and Brian, as a committee, are diligently working on. So, all right, uh, valve turning report. Um, we finally received that from Simpson. If you want to give us an update on that? I mean, I went through it all. There's a nice CD like we've been promised, and there's a, a two binder report. And the, um, the other thing is, too, that I, I gave, I think, I'm not sure if I gave it to you, but I gave Bob um, my password to it. Uh, you have the ability, even if you're, you're, these uh, books burnt down in a building and everything was lost, these are GPS, they're this, which is one of the reasons that it took a little bit longer, you know, to get the report out. Plus, they, they, it's online. I mean, you have the ability right now to go to M.A. Simpson to their website, pull up the Village of Beecher, punch in the password, <coughs> and you can see every valve, anything uh, from, your, from your computer and or smartphone, um, which is a very, you know, promising. I mean, as far as the, um, um, the valves being replaced, yeah, there, there's a few of them that we knew were, are, um, where the nuts are rounded off and they're harder to operate. And mm -hmm. the other good thing is that because we have the ability to talk to Simpson online uh, and communicate, every time we put a new valve in or replace one, we can go in there and upload the information and that's just less work that they can have to do for us and it saves us money in the end. Well, there, there's also some advantages to this also. There's, oh, yes. We get these new maps and stuff that the guys will all have, especially in the water truck. They're getting a, they're getting I have a, them getting, today. They're, all right, they're so now truck. we can take that and we can take valves that we know are no good, and we can save time in the field if, if you do have a water main break because we can mark those on those maps. So mm -hmm. the guys know not even to go to attempt to try to work on that valve. You hop right over and get to the next one where you can get on it. It's it's a it was a positive thing I think the valve turning. Oh, it is. Purple. It's a very positive thing. All right, um, Prairie Avenue water main project update as Buddy just stated. Everything's up and running. Um, we're just going to be waiting on the restoration, which know. I will diligently expedite. And Elm Street water main replacement us restoration update. Um, same thing. We, you know we all understand and know where that is. Miller Street portioning televising update. I know we had a, a, a meeting set up for these guys and we, they were scheduled to come out. I think it was not last Tuesday, but the Tuesday before they canceled on us because I was going to do it. They canceled on me three times. So, so hopefully we can get that done. If not, it's time to start. I, uh, I there's some, it's there's a other specialized thing and there's not many of them out there, but uh, they're going to find time for us or we're going to find somebody else who will. That's so. correct. Um, consider a motion authorized the installation of variable drives in the booster station by Austin Electric in the amount of $16,593. Um, $17,500 was budgeted for this project. Um, there still needs to be some changes in the SCADA system to accommodate these drives. Um, you know, we, we've been discussing this for a while, now we want these in, ready to roll, so um, get them done before the summer hits. So I will make a motion authorizing the installation of variable drives in the booster station by Austin Electric in the amount of $16,593. Second. There's a motion on the floor and there's a second. There's a question for discussion. Funny is, is Austin going to be buying the DFDs and doing the installation? Yes. So this is the all in cost? Yes, that's what you Other guys... than what we need to do with... with, with yeah, with, with Kemp. Yeah, and they're, uh, they're on board. These ADB drives? Yes. Yes. Well, all our drives are the same. Yes. Well, same manufacturer. Just same manufacturer. It's not the same. Different size. size. Correct. Depending on the horsepower, it's going to change your drive size. Any other questions? Roll call. Whaley? Yes. 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 Consider a motion authorizing the acceptance of a bid for the completion of thermoplastic paint striping of all village streets in the amount of $21,844.07 to superior road striping of models. Um, this bid process was handled by the Suburban Purchasing Co-op. Um, 
it, everything was done off of uh, per foot. Bob used some stuff that we had had that we had always used from when we would have everything painted. So we had our, our lengths and the widths of these bars and everything else on the roads. Um, so Bob was, with a lot of work, able to get this pinpointed down and we were able to get a price back from them. Um, this is something that has been, been discussed for a few years now. It's something we've wanted to do. Um, and I think in the long haul, this ends up saving us money by doing it and, and getting a, a, a nicer product that's going to last longer rather than constantly having to repaint those streets every year. So I will make a motion um, authorizing the acceptance of a bid for the completion of thermoplastic paint striping of all village streets in the amount of $21,844.07 to Superior Road Striping of Melrose Park. Second. There's a motion and a four, and there was a second. Any questions or discussion? I guess one, one point I want to make, and John, you kind of glanced over it, but <clears throat> it costs us 10000 a year to do the similar thing, and we have to do it every year. So if you figure that this stuff is going to last for five years, that's $50,000 we'd spend, as opposed to 20. under 20000 so And this is five to seven, and you know, on, on our less busy streets, we're not... We should get a lot more than the five to seven. You know, some of our busier streets might be at that five year range, but regular striping is going to last. Yeah, just the pain of bidding out every year. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a good, it's a good one. That's a good question to come. Roll call. Clarity. Yes. 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 Road conditions after a harsh winter. Um, you know, I. Me and Buddy did it together. I went out and did it. Um, especially took a big look at um, a lot of our new streets that were just done last year. Um, this was a hard winter. It was. There's no doubt about it. Um, we need to get on board with the crack ceiling. Um, we have twenty thousand budgeted, and we will be doing that this fall. So um, that's just kind of an update on that. Updates on repairs to lift stations in the sewer plant. Recent preventive maintenance has uncovered some need for repairs at the sewer plant and the Cardinal Creek lift station. Um, at Cardinal Creek, both pumps have to be rebuilt due to the acidity of the water being stagnant in the wet well. Um, the engineers are working on a solution to this problem, which we will discuss further um, next month. And the second issue is RAS lift it station at the sewer plant, which is still acting up and will need repairs. Uh, this summer, grit removal and the rebuild of Clarifier 2 is planned and work is being scheduled now. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Is there any questions? Yeah, I have a question. I'm sorry. Um, no problem. Uh, road conditions after a harsh winter. Uh, we do this crack ceiling and uh, I look across the street and we've got these big gaping cracks in winter. Is there some type of material that is a little expansive or, as far as I'm concerned in winter, the salt goes move right in? Yeah, and it's not even so much the salt that's the concern, it's the water. You yeah. know, you got that water getting in between your lips and your face. Um, that's you your... Still, you still got those big gaping cracks. Well, it, it has been, what, Three years, I think. This will be year three since we've the past two winters we have not done crack sealing. Um, and the last time that we did do it, um, it was all done pretty much in, in Hunter's Chase on, on newer roads. Um, you know, right now I think our number one priority is going to be to uh, protect and preserve the roads that we just spent a lot of money on last year. And I, I think priority number two, Ron, I, I agree with you, has to be getting back to those streets that haven't been done in probably five, six years. And we're looking at those. The crack ceiling is supposed to be elastic, and mm -hmm. and with that, and I just think with all the roads, and it's just been the number of years that it's been since we've done it. It is definitely time to pay attention to some of those roads and and possibly get back in there and retreat them. So <clears throat> there have been no improvements made in material or something expansive line or something. Not I just that don't see I've this. ever heard of. I mean, that is something maybe we can ask. Uh, what is it, Tara from Baxter and Luna? Mm -hmm. We we went to a lot of seminars around. We looked at. Uh, they have cement seal now. Mm -hmm. We went up to what was it, Toyota, Toyota Park. Park. Yeah. Uh, we we battled in slurry seal. We battled in seal coating. We battled in crack sealing. 
and none of them is the ideal solution. When you get a winner and, and it goes to 20 below, and then it goes to 50 degrees, that, that road just splits, and the worst time is when it's thawing. You see these big gaps. In the summertime, those gaps do close. So those yeah, well, I know, but in the winter is when we need it. There's nothing. There's nothing on the market that can prevent a three-inch crack from opening an emerald. When is the last time we spent 20000 on this? It was three years ago. We haven't done it in the past two years. So it was, uh, it had to have been the, the winter of, the fall of 2011 going into 12. You'd think there'd be... And at that time, like I said, the, the number one priority was everything was done. It was in Hunter's Chase West. A little bit of Hunter's Chase and like Hunter's Chase East, it was concentrating on newer roads that had their final lift done within the last five years. You take Hodges Street. That had never been done before. Hodges Street from Gould to Oak Park. That road was paved last summer. Mm -hmm. Go look at it. It's, it's cracked. And it was from the hard winter. We're going to have to crack seam on Gould to see. Yeah, that, that, like I said, that's our number one priority is we have to protect our investment that we just made last year. Mm -hmm. And then we have to get back in there and Look at some of these areas that haven't been done in, in years. So, you look at railroads in the prairie. Uh, how old are those streets? It's got to be seven years, Bob, or six, isn't it? Yeah, prairie had never been done. I don't no, know. but Melrose was Melrose done like was six done. years ago. And yeah, Ron, I agree. You know, there are some stress fractures in where you're at. And yeah. uh, and I'll tell you this: this year was brutal. And the minute it got in there and it freeze, go back. It just keep making it worse and worse and worse. You got some over here on Cardinal Creek. You got a four-inch gap. Yeah. That's why I said at the budget meeting, we're going to have a lot of roads that we're going to have to take care of this year. And um, some of them, Ron, I think they might be so far gapped out that don't, there's, you're not going to be able to crack seal them. We're going to have to go in there and saw cut them and literally throw in maybe a, a three-inch line of the width of the road. I mean, it's, and, and then you know, hot patch it and roll it. Because that's the only answer you put the butt joint in there. Don't you agree, Bob? That's the only thing you can do. Yeah, they have not come up with a surface yet that can handle what you want. It, it appears to me from looking at several streets that the cracks that go across the roads are the ones that gap. Mm -hmm. a across lot the ground, yes. The cracks that go across right. the road. Yes. A lot of it has to do with the design that, you know, uh, some of the roads aren't crowned, some are flat, and then they dip, and it, once they it, get that crack, I mean, it, it's just crumbling. It, and it, we're not the only ones. That's not a crown. You know, we say we'll crown it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the highest to run to the, the curbs and off to the side of the road, and, you know, it all depends on that crown, and once you start going at the top of that crown, it, it's tough. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we drive it really bad. I was Ron, I'm wondering the same thing about the material that you use. Is there anything that would be, as opposed to like superior, so let's say five years of work that you did $10,000 a year on right now. Is there any difference in the material that you're using for re road repairs? Is there anything that you can get that's better to do it? Like it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's blacktop, it's bituminous. It's, it's what it is, that's all you can get out of blacktop. The problem you're going to have is freezing and thawing is what makes a change. And unless you can change the physical structure of what happens from freezing and thawing of, a, of, of an item, you're never going to change it. It's going to be something when you, if you had concrete roads, you would have worse. Because those separations, there's, uh, blacktop is the most flexible of all the road surfaces you can have. And it's all based on its base. If the base is good, and as long as you take care of that, that top coat, the base will be there. But if the, if, if the top coat starts to fail, and that water gets further down, and it gets to the base, that freezing and thawing will snap that apart, and the entire base of the road will fail. And once you have road base failure, then it just starts to just propagate all the way down the road. That was basically what my question about the cement, too, like when you replace it like that. There's really nothing you're going to do to get it to be anything better than just time. It's going to it's going to crack. And it, it will. It, for 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 a we're, we're kind of comparing you know road surface with with concrete in a for a garage, but, but you can gonna, put you can crack. you can eliminate the movement of a concrete slab by not having as a slab you have foundation walls going down, yeah. getting it below frost. The roads don't have that. 
And our roads really don't have the best base to begin with other than the newer roads. Because the original roads were based on stone and chip. And they were built on and built on and built on, and then they were black topped over the top of it. So their bases are horrible. So, so when you get the freezing and thawing, it's gonna it's gonna buckle. So the most flexible road surface you can get is black top. That's my question. That's the and it's it's, it's just get. with where we're at, it's what we have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And I got one last thing that I want to add to this is, and it's just a reminder for the entire board that when we came about and we did this road study program two years ago. There was many different options. One of the options that we looked at was going for loan and doing redoing all these roads at once. And the board, we, we chose to take a conservative approach, not to borrow, spend as we go, as we have the money. And these are some of the things that we have to deal with by taking that approach to it. You have the setting the priorities of protecting the new roads as you just do it, still taking care of the old roads, taking care of new subdivisions that have now grown and are now um, 10, 12 years ma mature, seven subdivisions that are seven, eight years mature. These are all things that when you know we made the decisions we made two years ago to do this and to take this approach side by, you know, as we go, and you know, doing what we can every couple of years, and now having to factor in crack ceiling in in those in between years, um, this was a decision we made, and it's going to be a difficult one. Um, you know, I can assure everyone that you know me and Brian are going to be looking at this, and we'll, we'll set the priorities, and we'll, we'll do the best we can with the funds that we have available. So that concludes my report. To the uh, number one. Economic Development Committee Road each week. Bernard, well, the sewer connection update. Uh, we met with Bernard officials about three weeks ago, and a member memorandum of understanding was reached. The enclosed draft was presented to Bernard's by the village, and it outlines a plan for installing a lift station in Forest Main. Uh, this is still being negotiated, and the property owners along the route are willing to allow them to survey, but they are not interested in annexation at this point. Uh, the village will have sewer down to Corning, though, and an annexation agreement would be required before anyone could use the sewer. Bernard's would sign a pre-annexation agreement for such time when they become contiguous. And that's about all that's new with that project at the moment. Uh, smartphone application, we turned it into Google and Apple last Monday, a week ago today. They're hoping within the next two to three weeks, maybe, it'll become available, not for the public at first. Several of us will be able to download it and basically um, play with it, try to break it, make sure the links work, make sure there's no typos, and it would go back for any updates that need to be done, and then it would be ready to launch. And you'll send us an email when we start starting. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And like I said, probably get six, eight, ten of us maybe to take a look at it and you know, see if anybody can find things that are wrong with it. They can still go back and tweak it and do some things before the, the whole public sees it. Um, but it went ahead of schedule. We did pretty well with it. We worked on it very diligently. Uh, the spring newsletter was mailed last week. Uh, the intergovernmental meeting scheduled for Thursday, May 29th, um, is, it's the same agenda that we had for the January meeting that was canceled due to the blizzard. So a discussion of TIPS is on the agenda. Uh, the next item, considering incentive package for new home construction in the village, the committee met to consider a request from a purchaser of Prairie Crossing South Garden Home Lots and made a recommendation to the village board, which is contained in the enclosed report. Um, we spent a bit of time with this. They came to the village to talk about some kind of incentives, not to the builder or to the developer necessarily, but to actual buyers, to residents that would come in and, and buy property. The incentive we talked about was $2,500 to the new owner of any new home construction, not necessarily just for this specific builder. And it would come from water and sewer capital fund upon proof of closing of a new home. We would cap it at 100 units total, or, or $250,000. Um, the enclosed report discusses it, and um, if we agree to it, we can have the attorney draft an ordinance. And Bob, did you want to give any updates on it? Or? No, I think it's something we should try. It's not something I, that we would actually be spending. It's it's things that were coming in from our. Um, I, I sent an article to you and Greg about what Wilmington did. Wilmington's weaving all their fees on the first hundred units, I believe. <clears throat> We're not waiting at all. We're just giving them $2,500. Yeah. So 
this was basically just a little less money that the village would get. We were not impacting parks, <laughs> and uh, no. since there <laughs> since there wasn't much there to work with, right. um, and we talked about not discussing anything with the school district since we didn't think that would go too far anyway. So this is just money that would come out of um, you know, our fees. It's money that we wouldn't get rather than money we have to come up with to spend. How are you going to make sure that the owner, uh, the buyer, gets that money? Because that is going to go to the builder, correct? No. As far as fees. The buyer is going to come in with his certificate of closing and make the checkout. So after closing, they would come in. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that the so builder or the developer They can do. advertise it as an incentive, but only the buyer benefits, not the builder. And it's not something that they can use at closing as funds towards this, as far as any sort of equity. Yeah, it would be after. Yeah, yeah. 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 And we'll so push the blow on the water fee they got to pay for that meter. I have a question. Uh, it's not a, it would already be a new meter, right? Yeah, but they have to pay it then. So my question uh, first off would be uh, what do you do with subdivisions if these houses are built and closed where we've already collected them? We, we talk about money that we wouldn't be collecting, well, there is subdivisions where we were sitting on those already, correct? No, this would be, if the builder wants to build a home after the next meeting, you have to pass an ordinance. Okay. That would that would be in play. There would and be no existing permits where this would come into play unless you want to include them. No, my question is, is in the future, if somebody, MGM, correct? We've collected some. Tapping fees already? Yep. Okay, so we're talking about money that, you know, is, is anybody else following me here? Am I just not getting this? The these, these have already been collected. They're not, they're not housing under this proposal. Those houses have already been sold. What about all the waivers that we have out there? That's so what I'm asking. asking. That's exactly what I'm, I'm asking. Is what, what if somebody buys a lot and a house is built there? We talked about we that. We talked about yeah, the, there are the waivers would not yet. Like an MGM. Now, okay, now I'm fine. Yeah. So those MGM wouldn't qualify? Yes. Yeah, yeah because but those waivers are already paid. Right. There's, so, there's, and that, I think, was in the report, that those would not we be We can't afford out $2,500 we don't have. Well, my next question is, it, would that be considered favoritism, or it, it could be not favoritism, but it could be construed as though we're trying to push somebody to develop into one area over another? If it's offered here, because believe me, I'm for it. I think we got to we got to do something. I think, to I, think of I think the difference. I think the difference, John, is the 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 incentive that they're talking about is twenty five hundred dollars that the village receives from the builder. All we're doing is refunding that back to the but, homeowner. Now, hang on. Where at at MGM, there is no there's waivers there, so there's zero fee for for that tapping, the the, the own homeowner is not paying that tapping fee. So all we're doing is, if a tapping fee is paid, we're re, we are reimbursing the homeowner, so they pay no tapping fee. As MGM is right now, there is no tapping fee in MGM because they have waivers. So you can't reimburse something that they're not paying. Besides, you you need need to besides <laughs> my no, point I is, I don't I don't look at it that way. Bottom line is, we're trying to spark growth within the village, and I don't think anybody disagrees with that. That deal has already been cut and had. Just like any other new subdivision that would come in, we would make a deal with that subdivision, and it could be different from any other deal we had because it was before us. If we would have only made this, and that, the, the request actually came in only for this unit, mm -hmm. but then when we sat down and we talked, we said, no, if, for the whole town. Wherever we can apply it, we would apply it for the whole town, but we put a limit on it. Now, if we were to do it only for this development, I think you have a very good point. But everything else that we're doing, I think that deal's already been cut and made, and there's nothing we can do about it. But then you're incentivizing, I, I understand what you're saying, Gary, but at the same time, you're, whereas there's only one subdivision where we have waivers, correct? No. There, there was some prepaid to it. I don't even know where they got it, but there was some of it was 15 years ago. And they're sitting in a, say, pocket box somewhere. I don't know where they're at. They were bought the by residents. Yeah, the residents bought them. They're vacant lots and land subdivisions. So, so technically, with these subdivisions that have the waivers, they should transfer that savings to the buyer. Technically, 
That's correct. Okay. That's correct. That was what we got talked about in the committee. They, they, they got these waivers for providing us in-kind donations of land and oversized lift stations and oversized pipes. They didn't give us cash for those waivers. So in a roundabout way, they did receive that $2,500 just differently than what we're proposing now. Right. And it's they like should a, give that savings to the buyer. In theory. In theory. Right. Just like if we raise a, a, or raise a fee or something like that, they're just going to pass it on to the buyer. So that should have happened to that, but we don't know whether they did or didn't. So what do you do with the ones that have bought the residential lots that haven't built? I don't know how many there's left. There might only be two or three left. I don't know. Do we have an exact count of how many of those outside of MGM that may exist? I might have something in an old file somewhere. Yeah, it was 15 years ago when we offered that. I'm pretty sure there's probably a couple floating around there. I bet you Nelson's got one. You know of three. They have at least three. You know of three? I, I, well, I don't know. But you can't, you can't give out money you didn't collect. You know, I, I understand. At the same time, I love the idea. I think it's a fantastic idea. I just don't want it to appear as though we're trying to steer a potential home or away from one area or subdivision and towards another area or subdivision because they can get a $2,500 check from the village after they close versus not getting it if they move here. And I understand that that savings should be there in the cost of the home, but it's the difference of physically, tangibly having a $2,500 check in your hand or not. And advertising it to that effect. I think, that, okay, I, I have a question now. Let's say we didn't do this and we just decided to arbitrarily drop all of our fees by $2,500. Is that steering? I'm just asking because those permits were issued with a certain fee. I, I really like this idea. I think that's, yeah. I think it's a definite positive. I think it was hit home to a home buyer. And, and you know, that, that, that actual being able to walk in after you close and go and sign up for your garbage service and your water service and, you know, basically, you know, fill out a form and the village is mailing you a check for $2,500, you know, in a couple of days. I think it's, I think it's a fantastic idea. I just want to make sure, and I'm, by no means am I against this. I'm definitely for this. I think it's a positive thing, but I think we, we, we just got to be careful. Be and yeah, I think. Yeah. May I make a suggestion? We kick it back to committee, and if any of you have any other ideas before then, the committee chairman will consider it, reconsider it. I think the attorney should review the proposal. We could approve the concept, I mean, we review. I don't think Jonathan's opposed to it. We just want to make no. sure that we don't get he raised, he raised the point, yeah. and it sounds yeah. like this always agreed to the point. So rather than, again, we're not going to resolve it tonight, let's kick it back to the committee. Can we, can we do, review it, come up with some other ideas if you have any for them, the committee chairman, and in the meantime, whatever, whatever we come up with can be reviewed by the evening. So in other words, we would table this tonight. Um, Comcast annual Beecher Cable TV report is enclosed for your review and consideration. 29 complaints were received last year from Beecher customers. Um, Only uh, customers. Um, comments sent a letter to the village explaining the proposed rate increase. Please see the enclosed letter with the attached explanation of the new rate structure being requested from the ICC. Um, this is for transmission of power to the customer and not the supplier of energy. So is this only going to ComEd customers as opposed to First Energy? Is this going to everybody? It's like this, three this, bucks or something. First, first of all, this, this has nothing to do with who provides your power. Okay. This only has to do with how your power gets to your house. So if it's First Energy, uh, NIPSCO, Commonwealth Edison, whoever produces your power is independent of this. This has to do with Commonwealth Edison's transmission fees. That's all it's all about. Now, being we're on ComEd, uh, does it seem like we've been losing power more often uh, recently? Yeah. That one evening and day, we had, what, four power failures, and I believe the information I received was there was an equipment failure somewhere. This morning was the same. I mean, we didn't lose it totally. Well, with the high winds, there were 
I have to admit there were ones that I didn't think were that bad, but it actually blew bricks off, uh, you know, my deck and that. But the, the table, yeah. it, it's been there all year, winter long, but all of a sudden we had a problem. Plus we had the two poles. I was going to say, there were, there were park. well, along Route 1, the road was closed Sunday, just north of Indiana Avenue. Mm -hmm. yeah, but there, lines down. there were lines down. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, so, that wind does a lot of damage. Well, I know, but it seems like it's been more I, I consistent. Huh? I was just wondering if they were doing work or updating equipment or whatever. Um, and that is the end of my report. Thank you. Lillian Expressway, uh, that report was actually given better than I could uh, by the OMS Ombudsman, by the Ombudsman, by the But in any event, uh, South Suburban Airport, we did uh, this community that surrounded the South Suburban Airport did meet with Secretary Ann Schneider and an entourage of attorneys uh, to discuss the Senate Bill 20 that was passed and the, uh, who was going to run the airport and how it's going to be run. Uh, we expressed some of our concerns as far as the verbiage that was in that, uh, which uh, they took back and they were uh, are supposed to consult with us at a later date. Uh, some of the things they did explain and why they did what they did to make it more attractive to a uh, partnership to some of the things we down the road uh, and there's just further discussion to be had. Will County Governmental League, Bob and I traveled to Springfield uh, one day. Uh, we did meet with uh, Senator Cullerton and other senators and some of the hot topics on that particular day was uh, just been a lot of press release lately on the firefighters, on the uh, mandatory manning or the minimum staffing standards. And also there was another bill being sponsored about the consolidation of the municipality or, or the trustees of a fire district decide that they want to consolidate districts uh, to cut down on funds, to have, uh, no funds available, so on and so forth, that they were trying to have restrictions that they had to go through <coughs> certain steps before they could do that. Uh, those items are still hot topics as of today. Uh, local gover governmental distributive fund was also spoke about, uh, discussed. Uh, we've been sort of assured that it probably will be there in the future. In fact, there was a news report this evening on what the governor is planning for the future as far as those funds, uh, helping to fund pensions, not helping to fund pensions, and so on and so forth. But again, it's still a hot topic. Um, we did have the highlight of our day. Uh, we met the governor, Bob and I. Uh, we first we met him, I never have. So we had an opportunity to meet with him and, and talk with him a little bit. Uh, and actually, it was uh, one of the better uh, lobby days that we've had down in Springfield. We have another one uh, coming up, which is this Wednesday. We're going down with the uh, Illinois Municipal League and the South Square Mayors and Managers, uh, in which we also have a meeting with the, with the governor again to discuss some of these topics that are going on. The South Square Mayors and Managers does have a dinner meeting uh, May 15th at Scrimetti's, and since it's close by, I like to open up to the board that if you'd like to go, please let Bob know. Uh, and then we'll make the reservations. We do have a credit there uh, for two individuals, Bob. Mm -hmm. For two individuals. So if and the entire board would like to go, that's fine. If we at least get two of you, we'll be up our credit before they start making interest on it. Uh, Since this is close, there are several communities where a lot of trustees go from the South Suburbs. And if you're just curious to see what the South Suburban Mayor's Managers are about, here it's close. You're not traveling all the way up to Blue Island like we have before. After our last meeting, Bob and I discussed it. We like to say we'd like to open the invitation to all of you. And if you do, let Bob know. East Town Board meeting. I sort of nothing really new there. We're updating equipment, uh, consolidation, bringing in South Chicago Heights and Stager. And that was it, right? South Heights and Stager uh, did in fact occur, and they are up and running as of this date. Uh, Route 1394 update, Bob, will let you do that. Yeah, we're going to have our kickoff meeting here uh, next week. We have hired a consultant. The consultant has begun its work. And they're coming in for interviews with me Thursday, the one on one interviews, and then the whole board meets next week, Tuesday. So that project is, is well on its way, and we expect to see a, a draft of a plan for public hearing in the fall. One item I'd like to add to this before we get to the last one. Uh, Paul Woman had traveled to Germany uh, last year and he met quite a few people, made friends out in Germany. 
some of those uh, individuals came and visited us in Beecher and the Tricone area. Uh, those were Christian and Gabriel Frick, Willie and Sophie Minchik, and Wilhelm Schroeder, and the granddaughter of Finja Kine. Uh, Paul took a lot of tour of Beecher, uh, Crete area, and they visited other areas throughout the Chicago, uh, Cook County, and so on and so forth. Uh, one of the things I think we should be proud of is we gave them, or Paul gave them, our Quai, Quasi, Quasi, that too, our books. Uh, we gave them books to take back to Germany, and along with that, we gave them, we have those little lapel pens, which is basically emblem. Uh, we gave them that to take back to Germany, so our piece of beach went back to Bert, uh, Germany. Uh, but I'd like to say welcome, uh, thank you for visiting us, and we hope you all come back soon. And my last item is after the last village board meeting where we passed a motion canceling the meetings in June, July, and August, the first meeting of the month, and moving everything to the second meeting. Even after we thought we reached a consensus that night, the very week, the very next day, there was still a considerable amount of discussion that had taken place where some of the trustees uh, still had a concern about what we did and how we did it. Some of them did not speak up that night. Uh, they wanted to try it. Some of them uh, thought they could make a 6.30 meeting, uh, the first meeting of the month, and that has become hard. Uh, to make the long story short, I would ask that we reconsider what we did. And I'm asking basically that we reinstate our June, July, and August meeting. What I suggest that we do, we pay our bills at the first meeting of the month. We would have a short agenda like we demonstrated uh, approximately two weeks ago. That meeting took approximately 15, 20 minutes. We would pay our bills. Uh, we would have the commission reports and do anything else that we could to speed up this meeting or the second meeting in a month, which we are on a roll tonight as well. Uh, and basically the conversation after I had with all trustees, we all admit that at some point in time, we feel that we are going to go back to two meetings a month. And since those two meetings a month are not going to differ from what we currently have now, because no, we had no other days we could agree, we're going through a lot of work to change something that we really don't need to change. But if we can shorten the agenda, the first meeting a month, push everything to the second meeting of the month, that way then the concerns that we've had about trying to make us, even though we all of us feel that we are very accessible to the public, we would even more accessible by moving all the agenda items to the second meeting a month, like we did tonight, and then we would move on from there. Open for discussion. And that's what that memo was that I it seemed to be a little confusing. I understood it entirely, you know, but I understand there was some concern uh, that, that basically we're asking to reconsider <coughs> that motion or probably <coughs> that's what we've done is to make a new motion reinstating those meetings in June, July, and August because we have not changed the ordinance whatsoever as of yet. So on the books, we are still supposed to meet the second and fourth Monday of the month at 7 o'clock, and all we did was cancel those three meetings. So I'm asking you consider to reinstate them. First meeting would be short agenda like we demonstrated to pay the bills. And then the second meeting would be to have our full agenda. Well, and I'll talk. I went in that week, probably not the next day because that's my long day. I went in on Wednesday probably on my day off. And it seemed like what was not communicated that night was going into Village Hall and seeing staff kind of crazily trying to make it work, changing the bill payments to the last meeting of the month. And that's when I said, why are we going through this if we're all available for the Monday nights anyway? Why not just keep it the way we had it? Which I think I brought up that night too, but there were just other things on the table and we never talked about it. Keep exactly what you said. Do this the second Monday of the month for the short agenda and then push the rest of the stuff to the second. That way the guys can still go to the school board meeting if they like, or women, whoever wants to go to the school board meeting. Um, the public can still see us, but we don't have to put staff through that kind of craziness trying to change the whole way they pay bills just to kind of accommodate a meeting change. It seemed like it would make more sense of that and they were perfectly willing to do it. It's just, it seemed like there was an awful lot of bandwidth being wasted trying to figure out how to change something that didn't necessarily have to be changed and we could still accommodate everybody by doing it this way. So that's when I went and was talking to him about it that Wednesday. If that was clear, or do I sound like your memo? I understood entirely. I mean, Kim, Kim is in the audience. Kim even chimed in the next day, or was it Wednesday as well? He even chimed in, and, and I had asked him some of this discussion that took place after that. I said, why wasn't this brought out in the meeting? I thought it was. And like Marcy said, apparently it wasn't made clear 
to at least three of the trustees that you know came to me afterwards. Um, so. Yeah, to me that night in the meeting it didn't seem like it would be that difficult. Like, oh, okay, no, well, uh, to go. Yeah, sure, why not? That's why staff, I went and started seeing that. Right, I think staff too wanted to make it work. Yeah. You know. And, and I think that was the impression that we got was, you know, we're gonna we'll make it work no matter what. But when you really get down to it, you know, you're talking a lot of work to make that happen. Correct. And like I said, if we're talking about going back to two meetings anyways, which by ordinance we're supposed to have, and we all agreed that it may it's probably gonna happen anyways, we're gonna go over a lot of work for nothing, which doesn't have to change. Make it easy, just I would say make a motion to reinstate the June, July, and August meetings, and then we'll take care of the agenda. I don't think it has to, it has to be, it can be part of the motion, but staff basically would do it internally. We'd keep the short agenda on the second meeting. All right, I make a motion to reinstate the June, July, and August, June, July, and August meetings. Second, second meeting of the month. There's a motion on the floor, is there a second? Second. Yeah, there was a second. Here's a question. These meetings are at 7 o'clock. Yes. Yes. I believe this was the, this. The main one is 6.30. Yes. Yes. That motion stands. We're not asking to change that motion. So starting June, they both go June, seven. July, and August, we go back to normal. The uh, May 1 stands. We're not asking, we're not discussing okay. this. That was the only motion that was made last month to cancel the okay. June, July, and August. Thereafter, everything's back to normal. We haven't changed the ordinance. Okay. There's a motion. There was a second. Any questions or further discussion? Roll call. Whaley? Yes. Holman? Yes. Proposed? Yes. Minor? Yes. Yes. 